Generic greetings and welcome to Command and Conquer Generals. Today's beverages. A nice refreshing glass of lemon and lime squash. So Command and Conquer Generals is the third major setting for the Command and Conquer series. We've obviously got the futuristic sci-fi Tiberium series, the alternate history Red Alert series, and then this thing, which is a little bit more grounded in tone than perhaps those other two settings, although grounded is, after all, a relative term, especially when we're talking about Command and Conquer, where, as you can see, we have a, just tentacles exploding and flying up in the air, left, right, and center, as we defend these admittedly very small down to patches in the middle of this plaza. Either way, this game came out in 2003, I believe, with an expansion that followed up called Zero, which I actually think is the better way to play it because you get a lot more units and generals and things like that. But we're just on the base game at the moment. Now, the thing is, I'm not particularly nostalgic for the game. In fact, I'd go on further and say that I don't think I really truly like the game that much, but I'm very nostalgic for the time when I originally played it, which will either be in the summer of 2003 or 2004. I remember it being a very, very, very hot summer, and at the time I didn't have a very good computer. In fact, it wasn't until I could really build my own machines that I had anything capable of running uh, something more powerful than, say, Pong, and more complex than that. But at the time, I was just uh, playing on friends' machines, and one such friend was going away for the weekend, and they said, hey, just borrow the computer, and you can play as many games as you like on the weekend, and I thought, yep, I'm going to take them up on that offer, and indeed I did, and on that weekend, I played three main games. I played Medal of Honor Allied Assault Spearhead, lots of multiplayer. I played Postal 2, which was unoptimized to hell and took ages to load, but still quite enjoyable, and I played this thing, which I did a bit of multiplayer, a bit of skirmish and that sort of thing. I don't think I ever really did the campaign. It was more just a skirmish in the multiplayer stuff, but... Either way, I haven't played this game in quite some time. I have, I say recently, I have fired the game up a couple of years ago and had one game of skirmish and sort of got myself back into the game, but I can't remember much about the game other than that. So either way, let's just check this thing out. Let's go to solo play and we can see our forces here. We've got China, GLA and USA and training. I'm not too sure that might be a fourth force. Uh, we'll go over to skirmish there and uh, yeah, as I said, there's three main factions. You've got um, China, USA and GLA. GLA stands for, I believe, Global Liberation Army. It's like a terrorist organisation as far as I can remember and to be fair, the game is very much a product of its time. I think I should really cover that, but basically I think you look at like the game, I think it's set in an alternate 2010 and I think it's very much informed uh, from the September 11 terrorist attacks as well as the subsequent war on terror and invasion of Afghanistan and that sort of thing. I think it's very much a product of time and you can really tell the pedigree on that one. Either way, let's go over to our forces. We're going to actually play China because it's got a nuke cannon in the game, which is one of my favourite units in, well, any RTS series, although very, very inappropriate. It's also really cool. We're going to have USA and USA and GLA. We're going to have ourselves and the US on Team 1, followed by the other US on Team 2 and the GLA on number 3, just so we can really chill out and in terms of map obviously we need to go on a four player map I'm going to go down and see if there's any of the maps that I remember playing I certainly remember playing on that map and not that one not that one that one's a very good one very defensible and I'm just checking out the other ones and we're going to go quite large here now we're going to go back up to say that one there we'll accept that so China USA uh, USA and GLA with the other colors set that's fine you can see I have won one game at some point that was let's say a couple of years ago when I played originally and we're going to go to play a game and see if I can remember anything about this now there's a couple of big departures not just in terms of uh, tone and theme and all that but from the overall mechanics so obviously in previous Command and Conquer games you set it going it'll say building tick 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 and then you place it whereas in this one you have to use doses to then build these these structures and you can have multiple doses building they build up slowly like in you know the, you can see the percentage going up there so you don't just build them from your mcv and then go immediately and just place them and it's it's very much very different so i've got my dozer building here i'm going to go up the top here because i want to place a supply center i think oh no actually it's not there it'll be oh it's down here okay fine um, so we'll place a supply center here. This is where we gather the resources. You can see we have these, instead of like a Tiberium field or like a big field of gold and gems like we have in other Command & Con games, we just have these supply uh, docks, which is something they followed on with in the um, Red Alert 3 game, I believe. Well, in fact, I know because I've recently been playing that game. Anyway, we're going to build a barracks. We also have these a thing on the right-hand side that's flashing. This is our sort of general powers here. You get experience and you can get loads of stuff to unlock. I'm straight away going to unlock the new cannon because I said it's one of my favorites, so there you go. We're going to build another one of these supply trucks and we're then going to place a war factory in here and then we're also going to start to create some of our red guards which I'm going to put five in the queue but you actually get ten because you get um, you get to sort of um, two for one 
uh, offer on it, and that's fine. There's also some up the top here. You can see there's like these, these two like oil derricks, but I don't know if I can actually capture them. I really don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side here. I'm actually gonna. Oh, I was gonna say where's my radar, but I don't think I get one as standard. I have to build it from. Yes, I have to upgrade it on here. So there we are. That's fine. I'm gonna go and get one of these doorses and go down to the center here, and I'm gonna place the bunker. Right around here, this is like a battle bunker type thing. You also notice that there's no range, like maximum range on where we can build, which is another another departure. So you used to get very uh, interesting builds. Uh, there's our radar just come online. Let's place a battle bunker in there. As you can see, we can build pretty much anywhere we want, which is a very big departure from uh, previous games. I'm going to quickly rush down here. You can see we are getting charged, but if we put these guys in there, we should be able to defend all. They're going to be longer range. Yeah, typically they're actually longer range than... And then this guy, so I'm going to have to go forward with this one and do that. And also, I'm going to have to then get these guys to go down and repair it. Once again, we don't have any... There we go, we've actually got that done. Yeah, we don't have any... We don't have any options for repairing or anything. It is simply, as you've seen, just get the dozer over there to, to do that work. Anyway, we've got some of these anti-tank units, which is good. And are they just going to... Yeah, they're just going to sit there. So these battle bunkers, I think, are pretty much completely and utterly useless. So I will sell that one because, well, we're just going to get absolutely hammered from long range. Let me just get these guys up here. These have got some... Uh, He's got some rockets, so we should be able to take them out. And, oh, we can only select so many there, but look, look, there we go. And they're moving, and they're coming towards us, and they will be able to. They will actually be able to run over us, so that's a bit of an issue. What I'm going to do instead is build this like Gatling cannon, and I'll place it there. That should hopefully deter most people. We also have these side points that we have to defend against as well anyway. So we've got radar up and running. We can start to make, I think, a couple of dragon tanks. These are really, really cool for holding off different positions. And I'm going to upgrade to Black Napalm, which is extra fire damage on these things as well. Our ally is down here, as you can see, USA, uh, different forces there. So you've got, looks to be a Patriot Tower of some kind. And yeah, then we've got an airfield. There's their dozer. Hmm. Anyway, so we're going to get this thing over here, and we're going to bring it over to the left-hand side, and we're going to set it up to basically fire flame and spread it all the way around here, because anything that comes along will hopefully be pretty much immediately destroyed, but we'll see. So we've got that going there. We'll place a firewall, and we'll say fire forward there. And there we go. So that's how our firewall and oh, as you can see, we've got this Gatling gun and it's shooting this toxic tractor, I believe it is called. Anyway, that's now being removed, and that's not how I wanted you to set up so go there and I want to fire there so is that right that is that is a little bit better yeah that's fine so we're gonna do the same thing down the bottom so we'll send them down just to stop anyone coming past uh, that is being depleted at a fairly big rate and oh good grief unit lost what happened there that just exploded and I have no idea why let me go ahead and build oh, I can't build an overlord tank um, I'll have to build a couple of battle master tanks and we'll place them there and that's now getting built we will also get this propaganda tower I think it is called yeah, propaganda center and then we'll place propaganda center in there and I'm hoping that we can then build a hacker it says, can, uh, where's that at? Oh, it's actually planes. See that? That was a plane. So I reckon that's what attacked us. That would make perfect sense as well to destroy that thing over there. Okay, fine. Uh, let's place one of those Gatling uh, towers there. And we'll place another one on the other side. So that is 35% building. Yep, there you go. So you can see there's a very big departure from the other game. So it's not a grid for your placement of buildings. You can build them anywhere you like as long as you get a uh, dozer there. Obviously, you have got these doors as well that you can put them pretty much wherever and move them around and you can have multiple things building. So very much a departure from, yeah from the other games. We've got Black Lotus, I think that's that's our hero unit essentially. Equivalent to say like Tanya or Boris or many others. Uh, let's bring, oh this is a, what's this? A propaganda tower thing. Yeah, speaker tower. Heals your force, increases firing speed. So this is actually in position so I'll say, do our flame then. You see it's actually the black napalm now so will cause a lot more damage hopefully. This side, I think, is pretty much sorted. You can see we also have... Oh, no power. That's a problem. Let me go ahead and place another another power plant there. Yeah, um, we've got these speaker towers, and these will heal our units. We've also got... when we, If I can get these guys out of the building, uh, we also have... Where are we at? Under attack. But it's up here. 
No. Don't know where it's under attack. Anyway, uh, we've got these these forces. And you, you can see like a star. That's like a like a sort of horde bonus around them. Like a um, the more you have, the the better they are, sort of thing. Anyway, plus another power plant, and because our power is going down, at least that's uh, still sort of followed on from uh, the other games. So we've got an overlord tank now and also a nuke cannon. So I'm going to build a couple of overlord tanks and then I'm going to build a couple of other things as well. And what happened there? That was looks to be a plane of some kind that tried to attack us here. So I'm going to get the dozer to go over and get that all healed up. We also have, oh, a fair number of forces down the bottom here. That's a lot of forces that I didn't expect to see at this stage. Let me get these guys come along. Uh, they're actually probably going to come towards me, hopefully. Yes, they are. And I've got these Battlemaster tanks as well, which um, we're just going to tell them to move. This is the GLA forces that are coming in. You can tell because they've got really, really rubbish uh, tanks and stuff. They're very much a uh, more an infantry force. Although, they actually, no, no, think about it, they do actually have a lot of uh, infantry and... Um, tanks and vehicles they've got like a toxic tractor what else have they got they've got yeah uh, different technicals and rocket rocket like barrage things and all sorts of stuff anyway so that's now healed up we're going to come down the bottom here get that one healed up while oh, it's actually full health so that's fine and right so i think actually what i'll do is bring that over to this side and we'll place them there I mentioned about the zero hour expansion that is I believe certainly the way to play the game simply because you get a lot of generals so at the moment we've got no we've just playing the three factions but with the zero hour expansion you have three generals per faction now I can't remember every, every single one but I believe there's a gatling for China there's like a gatling a gatling general which gives all of your even your guys here the same sort of capability as this thing which is really really powerful uh, there's a nuke general which gets bonuses for congratulations general oh. You have been promoted. We have been promoted. We will go for, I think, yeah. New cannons, inferno cannons are built as veterans. Done. Yeah, we got, I think it might be Flame General. Now that I remember, Flame, Gatling, and Nuke, I think. For USA, there's like a Super Weapon General, a Laser General, and I can't remember what the other one is. And then the for the GLA, I really can't remember at all because, quite frankly, I didn't really play them. Anyway, we've got these two Overlord tanks, which are massive, and we can do a couple of things. You can put a Battle Bunker on there, so you can have soldiers in the back. You've got a Gatling one, and then you've got a Propaganda Tower. I'm going to go with one of each there, of the, of the latter two, anyway. Just so we gain, uh, yeah. So just so we gain some, some nice veterancy and some options there. Let's bring us up here. And these are massive. These tanks. <laughs> In terms of the look of the game, I really don't think it's held up that well. When I, when I stack this up against things like Red Alert 2, which I recently played and completed. I mean, obviously that is that is a game that is basically the height of all art in any game that and um, monkey island the escape from uh, oh sorry the curse of monkey island is uh, you know th th those two games pretty much the height of of graphics in anything uh let me shoot that why can't they shoot that do they not have line of sight i don't think they do anyway that's now taken out um yeah you look at this and it's a bit mm, i don't know it's <laughs> it is after all you know early sort of well i think is it is it the first is it the first 3d command and conquer it might have been. It might have been, actually. Anyway, let's build an airfield because we want to see what it is like. Uh, we can see that there's been no major attacks over there. These uh, points here, I think you can actually capture those. But in the centre, we've got this oil thing, and I don't know how we capture it. I'm going to guesstimate that we have to use a hacker. It said, disable any buildings virus or hack the internet to steal money. It doesn't actually say. It doesn't say how we capture these things. Um, anyway. I don't think a doors can do it. And they're attacking over that side again, yeah. So they, they keep sending over... They keep sending over some stuff. Oh, here we go. We've got our new cannon. Yeah, they keep sending over some artillery to... Sorry, some uh, planes to try and take us out. Right, let's take this hacker then. And can we hack those things? I don't think we can. I'm waiting for an engineer so I can, like... Do that way. Oh, we've got some MIGs here as well, so we'll probably build a singular MIG followed by some armor because I want to send them over. In terms of the upgrades, you can see it's 25% MIG health. What's this one here? 50% for black near palm damage. It's like it's fairly bland and boring if we're honest with each other. And oh, that's a, a bit of a problem here. The GLA are coming and hitting us quite hard, and I think we'll actually lose this thing unless we can. As we can take care of business there. Let me move. Actually, let me get the nuke cannon in play. Let's force up, fire, force fire there. You can see it takes a while to deploy, but it will turn to face and please fire, please fire. And that's a dead tank. <laughs> so it lobs a nuke at a target and, um, well, there you go. We take out the target. Cool. Right, so we've got options for cluster mines. Artillery, off-board artillery, 
cash hacker I think we're gonna go with probably cluster mines so we'll use cluster mines and put them down there so anything that goes past we'll be able to hopefully uh, take out so we're gonna place a, another Gatling tank in there I was gonna place one of these bunkers but quite frankly I think they're fairly useless because most things outrange them but there you are I can't really speak a balance on the game because well it's been quite a while since I played it. I never really played it competitively anyway now it doesn't look like I can capture these so how on earth do you do that maybe dozer no uh, it looks like something's over on the left hand side there or was there at least it's uh well not there now <laughs> you can see that this thing here has now been depleted and they're going toward these little points we're gonna send the overlord tank down here i want a battle bunker i want to get a battle bunker and put some of these guys on the back probably some probably some of these anti-armor guys uh, I did play multiplayer. The game had an interesting multiplayer where, uh, for a long time, it wasn't. You didn't have to have stuff verified. Oh, what's this? Loads of villagers are coming in. Must be like a swarm type thing. And oh, look at all the mines going off. <laughs> yeah, um, like it wasn't that you could play on unverified maps. So people used to load up as a map very early on in the campaign, I believe. It's like a broke. You have to destroy a dam, and then the water go washes everything away, and you would load up on that because you couldn't see the picture and then they would blow the dam up and then you'd lose because you couldn't get out, uh, out there where they were and yeah also those other modes as well I remember playing like a tower defense mode which is really really cool where you would be able to uh, how many people can get in there five I think we'll have probably three anti-tank and one of the other there we go and yeah that is actually planes that were shooting down hmm. yeah as I said uh, you had like a tower defense thing where you like had to defend against waves and waves of stuff which was really cool uh, I don't think tower defense was a a real established, a really established um, genre at the time. So, yeah. Right. Anyway, let's go down and we'll see if we can attack the GLA. So we have three Overlord tanks, three of these Battle Masters, and we have a nuke cannon, which starts off at uh, this veterancy, a high veterancy level. Well, just one Chevron really. And we can see a technicals coming in, but quite frankly, versus three overlord tanks, it's not going to fare up too well. So the GLA have, as you can see, a lot of like um, man structures. So this one is actually like a like a tunnel tunnel system, so you can go in one and out the other. So yeah, I think you have to play them a lot less brute forge than the other two factions. And there was like I think it was like a stealth general where you can stealth like entire buildings and stuff, and that was really difficult to verse in multiplayer. Anyway, so absolutely sledging these bits here, and as you can see, once they're destroyed like that, you still get this tunnel like remnant where you can like rebuild, I think. And what's going on here? Looks like they're charging in there, but we've managed to take them out quite easily. There we go. So it looks like that is still getting hit. They are trying to repair it, but that's now gone, so that's fine. We've also got these uh, like SAM sites here by the look of it, or something. Uh, we've got people all behind these sandbags, so we're just going to slowly creep forward there, deploy the new cannon, and then fire, and then boom. And there you go. That's uh, now getting hit. Okay, so that's fine. We have capture building enables red guards to capture enemies and tech builders. Ah, that's what we need. Right, okay. So let me get a red guard then and we'll bring them over to here. And I'll actually bring, might as well bring the hacker down because, well, we might as well to see if we can check stuff out. And you see that? I told them to move there and then all these shifted for some reason. Anyway, do you want to move forward? We'll send these guys to move further forward. Battlemaster will move forward as well. There's the shot out and, oh, what a shot. <laughs> So it managed to take out pretty much all of those in one shot. That is brilliant. Uh, we're going to go for probably some artillery barrage there. And that is now fine. So we've now got the Red Guard able to capture buildings. So it'll take a little while, but we should be able to tell them to capture buildings. And there you go. And they're going to slowly capture that. There you go. Cool. So that is fine. Going to go down the bottom here and tell those to keep attacking. I could just charge in, but obviously at this stage money is a bit tight, so I really don't want to be doing anything like that. I'm trying to line these guys up, but it's not working out. There's the uh, shots going out and a lot of damage now because this is a two chevron nuke cannon. There we go, and it's now a three chevron nuke cannon. So it seems that things level up very, very quickly, which is surprising. Oh, it looks like that's been captured now, so we'll send them over to the other side and do that. It looks like some more stuff coming in to try and take us out. They send one plane at a time to try and take us out, and it's not working. Um, another thing, obviously, that this game has that uh, we don't haven't seen in... Well, actually, hmm. I have to be careful here, because I really can't remember. It's got... Like dynamic fog of war, and you when you got in um, 
things like Red Alert 2 and stuff, you'd have Fog of War, but once you've uncovered it, you see everything permanently. And I think the same is true for Red Alert 3, but I can't remember about the later Tiberium games like Command and Conquer um, 4, or well, 3 and 4. We will be generous. There's them shots out. And there's them taken out as well. And there's loads of units coming towards me, but they didn't last long, especially against these Gatling cannon. And why would it? So, looks like we are heading towards their main base now. So, we're going to get them in. We'll bring this guy further forward and we'll tell it to attack that. That's their resource capture. That's their resource capture point. And it shouldn't take too long for me to deal with that one. And you actually see that ah, the. Americans are sending some troops to go and try and pick up these resources, but they're getting shot off that thing, which, well, that's not really a big surprise, is it? Let's move in with these tanks, because as you can see, we are capable of getting close now and starting to shoot without getting hit back. So these are absolutely massive tanks, these things, and we do a lot of damage. There we go, that's, that's pretty much taken out, taken that out, and then we'll slowly creep forward, because there's nothing much to stop us. So I'm going to put that there, I'm going to send this guy down to about here because I want to start lobbing shells at range. Uh, we'll send that there. What I also want to do, just in case something starts to come across here, we'll place that there as well. And there we go. So that's getting damaged. That is their barracks, I think, but it doesn't tell us just yet. We should go back here and we will capture that. There we go. And looks like, wow, that door has taken a hell of a lot of damage. Looks like we've just been assaulted once again. And we will start to launch our shots from this thing over to the to the left there. And that's fine. That's, that's getting taken out. That's now taken out. Going down, taking out all these. Typical Command & Conquer stuff. You can fire 20 tank shells at a bloke. It doesn't do much damage, but one bullet does because uh, damage economy. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, it would be just daft, wouldn't it, I guess. Um... So there we go. This is pretty much a foregone conclusion that we've already won, but we have to mop up now and we'll fire it there. That, I think, is their version of the Dozer. It's just a guy with a pickaxe. Um, and there's that taken out. And we're just firing away there. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. We've also got this off-board artillery, which we'll fire. And... Ah. Dozer. Yeah, I was going to say, there's something like a dozer has probably been taken up there. So we have been promoted. Excellent. So there's our artillery that came down about maybe 20 minutes after I ordered it, so fairly pointless. Uh, so we should be able to take that out, and that should be it. There we go. Normal army's been defeated. Excellent. So all that is now being completely d destroyed, so we're going to tell them to go to the centre here. Actually, speaking of the centre... Let's get the Red Guard to capture that, because why not? Why not indeed? So, in terms of our rank up, we do have 5 star general required for the EMP pulse. I think I'm going to go with probably the Artillery Barrage 2. Actually, no, we how many points we got? We've got loads of points to spend. Um, and there we go, done. <laughs> so yeah, we've been promoted, so we've got loads of points. I'm going to get the... Is there anything else we can build? Is there anything else we can build? Well, we can build a nuke, so we might as well do that. We have the option for extra damage on chain guns. We've tr seen an Overlord, we've seen a Battlemaster, we've seen the Dragon Tank. We haven't used an Inferno Cannon, but it's a more mobile version uh, of the nuke cannon, essentially. It's the same job, it's just long-range artillery. But you can, I think, move... You don't, I, don't, I don't know if you have to deploy. We'll build one and see what happens. We also haven't built a Gatling tank, nor have we built a troop carrier, but oh, it comes with eight Red Guard and detects stealth units. Yeah, that was a big thing in the game. Uh, we've got Nationalism, 25% hard bonus for Red Guard, tank run to Battlemaster, and subliminal messaging, extra speaker tower bonus, which we will we will go for. So we'll send this unit back to the center, which is defending that point. I will get this unit, and I will sell it, because, quite frankly, we don't need it there. And then we're going to put our bigger tanks on the front line and then we'll get the nuke cannon behind and then the little ones quite frankly I'm not too bothered about because they're just now getting in the way pathing seems to be a little bit of an issue there anyway we can see that we have got the USA force here we've got all types of stuff there we are uh, we've got our nuke in play by the look of it yeah we've also got uranium shells shot damage on battlemaster and overlord and nuclear tanks increased speed for battlemaster and overlord but if they blow up do they do they then i don't know if radiation goes around them i think that's the nuke general in let's say 
the expansion, which is, I think, far superior. Anyway, yeah, we go. We got our extra two units here, which we'll bring into play because why not? I want to build another. Actually, I don't want to build another doors. So I'll just bring the other doors over there to to repair that. I think all these buildings as well. You can order. Yeah, you can. You can order to have landmines around them as well. So yeah. Anyway, we'll get this hacker guy around the back and. Here's our units here. We're going to slowly move them in. I don't want to stand around. Did they just fire? I think they did just come along and fire some stuff at me there. I think their plane came along. You don't want to be sitting in this minefield because it will actually go off if you are if you get attacked, which I think was fairly cool. Speaking of minefield, I'm just going to dump one back there. You can place them wherever you want, which seems to be a bit dodgy. There's our flame stuff, which you can see with uh, firing. And... Oh, there's a F-22 or something. Either way, it's uh, now dead, and yeah, we've lost a unit as well. There we go. Okay, so we'll move these Battlemasters forwards. Uh, oh, sorry, Overlord tanks, Overlord tanks. And what's EMP? Strong versus vehicles. Well, they don't have any vehicles, so we're not going to use them. You see, the other USA force is coming in to, to deal with all of those, and that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. I don't know if the games used to last, like, not very long at all, but yeah, it does seem to be quite a quick game at times. We'll build some more MIGs, four MIGs in total. We can overclock these things, but they do take damage, yeah, overcharge. We haven't built Black Lotus, we'll build one of those. We have got that to fire soon. Got all the upgrades on that one, we'll go for nationalism. This has all been upgraded. And is there anything else that we can build? I think that's pretty much it. Um... I think that is pretty much it. We haven't got a battle bunker. I mean, we could build one if we wanted to. It's literally just a bunker. Nothing surprising there. War factory. Got. No, yeah, I think we've got the rest. Anyway, so I'm just waiting for this nuke. Or well, three minutes before this nuke can uh, come into play. And you see, I oh, look at that. I'm using my hacker to shut down their airfield so we can't. So, we, so we're not going to get attacked off, off that stuff. Although, to be fair, yes, it should be shut down. It should be fine. Um, what else can we do with them? I believe you can hack money. You can hack money. So you can just tell them to hack. Oh, that's right. You used to just get hordes of them in one corner where they're just hacking money like that <laughs> for the longer games. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Anyway, how are we doing over here? We've got all of those sorted. That one has been upgraded. So I think we've got all of the upgrades that we can get. Uh, do we have Black Lotus? We do, yeah. So, capture building, hack vehicle to disable, and ha cash hack. Steal cash from any resupply center. And looks like we took some damage there. It's probably it's probably from that thing. Yes, I think it was. So we're going to shut that down then because I think that will be of some benefit. I'm going to fire my artillery back at that thing there because why not? And I'm just going to drop an EMP because I just want to see what it looks like. Oh, no one got the delays on it though. Well, quite a bit. Here comes in the artillery, I think. No, this will be the EMP. And shuts all them down. That's actually quite good. And then there's an artillery that... Well, it was highly effective, wasn't it? <laughs> that went... all oh, that, that got completely destroyed. Anyway, um, how are we doing with the... Uh, Black Lotus will bring them in. Uh, hold on, one minute until... One and a bit minutes until we can bring in the nuke. Uh, so everything's pretty much shut down there, and <laughs> the other force down here is coming in with the uh, with, with, with their fighter. Let's have a quick look at them and see what they're up to. So they've got nothing else really building. You see the landing on there. Does it, does it tell me what that is? No. What's the different? There's the different upgrades. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's a more more realistic tone for the for the for the franchise and for this setting but yeah I must confess it lost it, lo it loses a lot of the fun that I find in Command and Conquer especially in Red Alert which is just completely silly and utterly stupid which is why I really like it uh, capture building we're going to say capture that because why not so we've got hacker man <laughs> on the go here <laughs> so we're hacking away there I think it'll yeah there you go so you can see what they're up to and so that building is ours and now we can build, like, Comanche. Oh, yeah, I thought it was Apache. Comanche. And you can get laser-guided missiles. You get Aurora Bombers and Stealth Fighter. And we can't build those because we don't have the tech building. Uh, we're just going to sell it because why not? 
So, not long now before we can launch the nuke, and that'll be the end of that. I'm going to place some cluster mines there, just to make extra loud bangs when this thing goes off, because as I said, uh, the cluster mines will actually go off if they get hit and do damage around them. They won't go off as they land on here, but let's see what happens. So, it says the nuclear missile is ready. There's the mines that didn't go off at all. Oh, I thought we'd get some mines around it. Either way, we now have the nuke ready. You can see it's uh, primed and ready to go. So we'll click on that. We will go over to here and we'll launch a nuke at there. And a nuclear missile has been launched. Let's see. Let's see just how much damage this does. I expect that to die, that to die, and yeah, that's pretty much almost dead anyway. So a couple of shots there. Won't take long. Loads of radiation around there. And... That should be a GG, and that should be a win. We are victorious. We are victorious. Yes, we are. So, that is one skirmish game of Command & Conquer Generals. We can see we had 14 units lost, we destroyed 86, and some other stats that we pretty much don't care about. And there you go. That is a bit of Command & Conquer Generals. As I said, I think... The way to play it, if at all, is to play with the Zero Hour expansion, which I may do a video on at some point, but we shall see. As I said, not a massive fan of the setting, nor really the, the game. I much prefer the other two settings, but, you know, it was uh, fun at the time, and, uh, you know, I still got some fun out of it there. I, that new kind of, for some reason, there's uh, something about it that's... Uh, it's sort of like gratuitous <laughs> artillery. Like you can't get much more over the top than uh, than that one. Either way, like I said, I think it's a product of its time and they try to capture the more realistic setting and that sort of thing. Don't know if it worked, but, um, well, we only had one expansion and that's pretty much all we saw of the thing. And then obviously went back to the Tiberium series with uh, Command & Conquer 3 and then the expansion, was it Kane's Wrath or something like that? And then we had Red Alert 3, which is fantastic. And uh, finally Red Alert, uh, Command & Conquer 4, which existed. Uh, I remember playing it and you had a big walker thing and you could do a co-op but uh, I don't really remember much more than that. Either way, I hope you have enjoyed this little bit look at generals. We'll let you know if, uh, I mean, did you back in the day, did you play a lot of it? Did you ever do anything like that? By all means, drop some uh, things in the comments and we'll see what's going on. It would be interesting to see if anyone remembers any of the game modes that were ran and that sort of thing. Like I said, there was a tower defense game mode and multiplayer and, and that sort of thing. Either way, hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic parlings.